joining us today for our cookbook presentation and conversation with Patricia Tanamuharja. Um, I'm Erica and I'm with Eastman Books of Berkeley. Eastman is an Asian American and Ethnic Studies bookstore located in downtown Berkeley. Um, if you're new to this space, um, please check us out at asiabookcenter.com. Thank you for being here and supporting us. This event is also co-sponsored by the Oakland Asian Cultural Center. I'd like to welcome Akemi Chan Imai from the OACC to share a few words. Hey, thanks so much, Erica, and thank you so much, Eastman Books of Berkeley, for inviting um, the Oakland Asian Cultural Center to be a partner. Um, I'm also very personally excited for today's um, program, as I'm sure many of you are. So uh, just to introduce myself again, my name is Akemi. I'm the program manager at the Oakland Asian Cultural Center. And our mission is to build vibrant communities through API arts and cultural programs that foster intergenerational and cross-cultural dialogue, understanding, collaboration, and social justice. And to that end, um, you know, Eastwind Books has been such a wonderful, um, great partner um, for, for years now. So it's wonderful to you know, partner once more on this program today. Um, I would like to now uh, take a minute or two to share a land acknowledgement. Um, though today's event is being presented in the virtual space, um, at least where OACC is, we're physically based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we would like to acknowledge the legacy and presence of the indigenous peoples who have and continue to steward this land. And we encourage everyone, um, Probably some of you are aware of this website, which I'll post in the chat box, um, which has been a great resource if, uh, if you need a starting point to learn whose land that you're living on. I will now share a land acknowledgement provided to OECC by Canyon Sayers Roods, who is a member of the Costanoan, Ohlone, and Chumash people. And she and her uh, mother, tribal chairwoman Anne Marie Sayers, are involved in the preservation of Indian Canyon nearby. Um, they, they're providing it as a space for all indigenous peoples who are in need of land for ceremony. We are in Huchin. The first language spoken on these lands is Chochenyo. We are virtually gathered on the traditional lands of those whom we know today as the Ohlone people. Ohlone territory spans from San Francisco east towards Oakland and south towards Monterey. Eight language dialects exist within this territory, and historically there are over 60 village sites. It is important that we recognize the original stewards of the territory. We pay our respect to elders, both past and present. We acknowledge that not only are we on their lands, but that they are still here and part of the community. There are three active community groups that have indigenous ancestry to this territory, and they are Confederated Villages of Lishan, Himeran of Ohlone, Bay Miwok and Plains Miwok and Muwekma tribe. Thank you. Thank you, Akemi. We always enjoy collaborating with the OACC. Uh, before we get started, I just wanna remind everyone to keep your mics muted during the presentation. Uh, we welcome questions and comments during the cooking demo. Please use the raise hand function and we'll call on you to ask your question. You can also use the chat box if you prefer to type your question or comment. There will be time for a Q&A after the presentation. So make sure to have your questions ready. Uh, now that we've taken care of all of that, so let's have some fun. I am super excited to introduce our special guest, Pat. Born in Indonesia and raised in Singapore, Patricia Tanamaharja has been a food and lifestyle writer for over a decade, and her bylines appear in many online and print publications. Pat credits her eclectic culinary aptitude and global outlook to her multicultural background. From personal essays to a treatise on soy sauce, she writes about the intersection of food, culture, and history. When it comes to recipes, she especially enjoys pairing tradition with modern day sensibilities. She's the author of four books on Pan-Asian cooking and her latest, Asian Pickles at Home and Instant Pot, Pressure Cooker Meals, which we'll be presenting today, are available now. Pat lives in Springfield, Virginia with her husband and son. Please join me in welcoming Pat.
Pat, I think you're you're on mute. Hi everyone, I am so thrilled to be here. Thank you for that introduction, Erica, and thank you to Eastwind Books for inviting me to be here to share my instant pot know-how with all of you. I am glad that you could join me today. And I'm just so thrilled that we can still gather together via Zoom, even though we're still in pandemic times, but uh, I'm glad all of you are here and we'll get started. Uh, so, uh, Jenny, do you wanna start running the slides? Thank you all for your patience. Um, these are trying to figure our tech out. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is not my kitchen, <laughs> but it's actually a photo that I found on the internet and this this has always been my greatest fear about using a pressure cooker. I don't know how many of you have seen or used the, uh, the good old fashioned pressure cooker that you put on your stovetop and it's got this little thing on top that wiggles. And when I was a little girl, my mom used to use her pressure cooker all the time. She would make oxtail stew, she would make beans, she would cook you know, like all the tough cuts of meat in there. And every time it would start screeching and wailing, I would just run out of the kitchen and I was just so scared of it. And after I got married, my mom actually bought me a pressure cooker for my stovetop. And I have to admit, I never used it. It sat on my shelf for the longest time. And until I finally gave it away, I think maybe about a couple of years ago to Goodwill. I, I felt so guilty, but I, I was just not using it. And um, and then, you know, the uh, Instant Pot craze started, um, what, this is like maybe about eight, nine years ago, and I absolutely refused to get on the bandwagon. So, but then my publisher actually approached me to write my cookbook and I was like, oh, okay, let me see what all this is about. And, you know, the more that I cooked with my Instant Pot, the more I loved it. And so I have called all those months of cooking and learning. And I'm sure as many of you know, learning how to cook with an Instant Pot has a pretty steep learning curve. But once you figure all the little things out, it's actually pretty easy to use. And, you know, even though I, you know, I cook for a living. It, it still took me a while to actually learn the ins and outs of using the Instant Pot. So even if you still have your Instant Pot in a box, do not worry. You, you just have to do it, take it baby steps at a time. And once you get the hang of it, you'll be using it in no time. So okay, before I get start, started with the cooking demo, I wanted to do a, sh a little poll. So two simple questions to ask. First one is, you know, do you have an Instant Pot? And how often do you use it? So, I'm gonna take part in this poll here. Has everyone submitted their answers? Oh, wow. So LG says he or she uses it almost every day. I'm impressed. It's very cool. Do we have the uh, results to the poll yet? Oh, wow, 93%. I guess, and a couple of you are still on the fence about getting one few times a month says 43%, a few times a week says 15%, every day says 3% and it's still in the box. 40% <laughs> of you say it's still in the box. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I hope after today, um, you know, I'll give you a few simple tips and tricks and actually walk you through how to use the Instant Pot after today. Hopefully you will take your Instant Pot out of the box and actually use it. And of course, buy my book. So, okay, well, let's get started. 
So today I will be making a really simple recipe. It's um, lemon teriyaki chicken. And I'm sure most of you have had teriyaki chicken outside, but so I added a little bit of lemon juice for a, a sweet tart flavor. And um, but it's basically a simple teriyaki chicken recipe that you can make easily in your empty pot. So let's put the uh, aromatics inside your instant pot. You can see my instant pot right here. So I've got some garlic, and this is about a tablespoon of garlic. But you can, you know, put as much as you like. So I know some people like more garlic, some people like less garlic. And then I'm going to put some grated ginger. I've got this really nifty ginger grater that my friend bought me. Like I think this is probably like I don't know, 10, 15 years old, but it still looks great. So some people like to peel their ginger before they grate it, but um, I don't really bother, especially when you can get some really nice thin skin ginger. I'll just grate it. Then okay, it turns out really nice and fine. If you can also use um, a microplane grater to do this, it's really easy. And if you don't have a grater either, you can always just you know chop it up really fine. And I've used both um, white granulated and brown sugar. You don't have to use both if you don't want to. I just like having brown sugar in there because it gives a nice caramelly molasses flavor to the dish. And then in here, I have got soy sauce and some lemon juice. <clears throat> And for this recipe, I use Japanese shoyu, but you can just use whatever type of soy sauce you have at home. Chinese is fine, Thai is fine, Filipino is fine. Um, or if you are gluten free, you can always use tamari. And we're just gonna stir it all up. People often ask me what's the difference between shoyu and Chinese soy sauce. And I think the biggest difference is the amount of wheat that is in the soy sauce. And Japanese soy sauce also tends to be a little thicker and a little sweeter. So, and I like to use um, Japanese soy sauce for Japanese and Korean recipes and Chinese soy sauce for everything else. But you know, not everybody has room in their pantry to have two different types of soy sauce. Actually, I have like maybe about three or four different types of soy sauce in my pantry. I have, um, so this is the light soy sauce and I also have dark soy sauce. I have sweet soy sauce. I have mushroom soy sauce. <laughs> so, but yeah, you, you don't have to have that many different types of sauces to be able to cook and eat well. So I am putting in um, chicken thighs and I've, you know, flip them in the sauce so that they're well coated. If you don't like dark meat, I love dark meat because um, I know it's probably not as healthy as breast meat, but I find that dark meat just tends to be a little juicier and not as dry. So, and I have left it in as well. But you know, if you prefer breasts, please go ahead and, and use chicken breasts or and, if, and or if you prefer to dice up your chicken meat, you can go ahead and do that too. You just have to make sure you adjust the time because you don't want your meat to be tough and dry. But the good thing about cooking in the Instant Pot though, that hardly ever happens. Anyway, so Thai and Put your chicken all in one layer. So, but, so that's why in my recipe I said you try to find small chicken breasts, or sorry, small chicken thighs so that you can fit it all in one layer. But if you can't, that's fine too. So, okay. don't forget to put your liner in. 
to the lid of your Instant Pot. So I have an Instant Pot Ultra. This is probably, I don't know, it, it came out after the very first Instant Pot um, model. And uh, so it has the dial as opposed to just all the different buttons. So yeah, first things first, do not forget to put your liner into your lid. I have done that a couple of times and I'll be like sitting there for like 20 minutes wondering why my Instant Pot hasn't come up to pressure. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put the liner in. So very important to put the liner in. Make sure it fits tightly. Then, put the lid on. Oh, a little bit turned around because, there we go. Okay, so turn to lock. And then I think in the older model, you have to make sure that the seal is closed, but this one does it automatically. And then I am going to search for a pressure cook. Now you will notice that there are so many different um, like mo modes that you can uh, turn your dial to. But I tell everybody there are only two modes that I use, the saute function and the pressure cook function. I mean, it's nice to be able to, to just turn it to like soup and broth and press the start button and you not, don't even have to think. It, but all it does is just gives you uh, a preset time to cook your meal. So, but in my cookbook, because Everybody has a different machine. I just use the pressure cook function and I give you a time of how long or how short you need to cook your dish for. And there you go. Okay, so pressure cook, I'm gonna press the button and make sure your pressure is on high. Some of the recipes in my cookbook are um, using the low pressure. And we're going to set it for nine minutes. So if you were to cook boneless breasts, it would probably be about eight minutes, depending on the size of your breasts. And you know, the one thing about cooking in the Instant Pot too is you can cook frozen chicken and there will be hardly any difference in texture, but you just have to change the time. So for um, chicken thighs, you if you cook it from frozen, you want to do about 11 minutes. Okay, I'm going to do nine minutes and I am going to start. Okay. I'm just going to... Okay. All right, so... Let me, I'm going to talk about Instant Pot accessories. So I have a whole bunch of accessories right here. <laughs> so these are the mitts that I use for pulling dishes out of my Instant Pot. So if you do the pot in pot method, you, you want to um, use some gloves. And these are great because they're, they're small, they're not so bulky and they slip in very nicely into the side. So, and I actually got these from Ikea. You can find Instant Pot brand um, <clears throat> mini glove uh, mitts online, but yeah, I just got these from Ikea. So I have, um, this is like a, it functions like a steamer basket. It's made of silicon and you, you can also put a plate on here or you can put parchment and you can boil dumplings or, um, you know, eggs, whatever you want. So I have that, that's useful. I have some dishes for pot and pot cooking. So I use, a, I use both a metal one and a ceramic one. So just depending on what I'm cooking and how much I'm cooking. Um, the, Metal dish will cook faster. And if you use a ceramic dish, you would probably have to increase the timing um, a little bit. So, oh, and this nifty thing is also for pulling out dishes from your hot instant pot. The, see, there you go. But you know, I hardly use this. I, I just use my mitts. And then these are like steamer racks. 
for pot and pot cooking. And so these have these holes here, so you can actually stick your eggs in them. <laughs> so if you want to um, boil or actually just consider steaming because your eggs actually don't go in the water, they actually sit on top of the water so they get steamed. Um, and the beauty about steaming your eggs in the instant pot is that they peel so easily. I'm sure that a lot of you are, have complained that um, your eggs don't peel very well. My husband complains every day whenever we make hard boiled eggs, like, this egg doesn't peel very well. <laughs> so anyway. That's that. And then this is the trivet or the steamer rack that actually comes with your instant pot. So, and you know, this works perfectly fine for all your needs. You don't really need to buy an extra one if you don't want to. So, and, and this steamer rack actually came with my rice cooker and um, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to use as well. It fits nicely in my six quart instant pot. So, so yeah, those are all the tools that I have. Accessory. Does anybody have any questions? Not yet? All right. We'll keep going. And let me just get all this out of the way. Oh, you know what I forgot to do was um, show you my ceramic insert. So I have two instant pot inserts. This is the regular one that came with my Instant Pot. And I also bought a ceramic insert. And that one actually cleans a little bit easier. I was hoping that it would be like totally nonstick, but it actually isn't. <laughs> but it, it's always helpful to have two inserts. So um, yeah, no regrets buying the ceramic insert. I will, um, hopefully I'll remember to just show it to you. You can tell that the different, uh, the inside looks a little bit different. Okay. Oh, and it's always a good idea to buy diff more extra inserts. And if you can buy colored inserts, that's even better because um, I like to use, um, you know, different inserts for cooking different things. Like, um, if you, I don't know if you can really, really see, but I use this insert to cook curries or in well-spiced dishes a lot. So it's a little bit yellowish and um, the smell sometimes takes a while to disappear. <laughs> so I do not wanna be making a cheesecake with an insert that I just use to make curry with. Um, and with different colors, you can remember like, so this is for savory food and this is for sweet foods. Pat, we have a question from Eugenia. Um, if I have a three quart instant pot, will I need to adjust the cook time for the recipe? So you don't have to adjust the cook time. Um, you just, uh, I, I guess you can just have the ingredients. And it, from uh, what you know, I've read, they say you don't have to adjust the cook time, but I would, I would do a trial and error because it takes, it will probably take a shorter time for your Instant Pot to come up to temperature. And then, um, you know, regardless of how much food you have in your Instant Pot, they, it will all take the same amount of time to cook. But then if it takes a shorter time for your food to come up to pressure, and then you add the amount of time it actually cooks, it, you will get a shorter um, total time um, to cook the entire dish. So, I would think that you'd have to increase the cook time maybe by a minute or so. But, um, you know, I would start off by using the uh, original time and then opening your Instant Pot to see whether the food has been cooked to your liking or not. And then um, if it's not cooked to your liking, then you can just, you know, put it back on and um, turn it on for, uh, you know, another minute or so. So once you've already started cooking and then you decide that you need to cook for longer, it will take a shorter time to come up to pressure because it's already hot. So it shouldn't take too much time more to actually do that. I hope I answered your question. Oh, all right. All right, so tips and tricks. So. When I talk to people about cooking in the Instant Pot, I, I always, 
give them a caveat. Don't expect your food to actually cook in an instant, even though it's called the instant pot. The food actually takes, well, it sometimes can take a shorter time to cook and sometimes it doesn't. Like a lot of dishes that, you know, are labor intensive or have to be nursed on the stove for a really long time. The dishes like my mom's um, beef rendang or um, the making chashu or ramen broth, you know, pho broth. So things like that or oxtails. Oh my gosh, oxtails can take like up to three hours to stew on the stove top. Um, <clears throat> so especially for dishes that traditionally take a really long time on, on the stove, yeah, the, those are really excellent dishes to cook in the instant pot because for sure, instead of taking like three or four hours to cook on the stove, it will probably take, you know, at the most an hour or so. Um, but the, the good thing about cooking in an instant pot is that it's hands-off cooking. Like, so after you dump everything into your instant pot, you turn it on to the correct um, pressure and timing, and you can go off and, you know, go read a book, play with your dog, hang out with your kids, watch some TV. So that's what I think is the, the biggest benefit of, of using an instant pot to cook. So, you know, like I said, you don't try to cook everything in your instant pot. There's some things that I just better cook on the stove. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, some of you who cook on, in the instant pot every day might disagree with me, but <laughs> and there are just some dishes that I much prefer cooking on the stove top, you know, like stir fry dishes for sure. Um, I definitely prefer cooking stir fry dishes on the stove top and dishes that, you know, I like to taste as I go along with the instant pot. You can't really do that, but on the stove top you can. So, um, and be sure to deglaze your pot so that you can avoid the burn warning, the dreaded burn warning. <laughs> so a lot of times, you know, you have to saute your aromatics first and or, and or brown your meat before you put in the liquid and turn your instant pot on. So be sure to, uh, you know, scrape the bottom of your pot when you're deglazing. So deglazing is just a fancy word for saying, okay, pour liquid into your pot and scrape the bottom to remove all the burnt bits, okay? So the Instant Pot can save the day when you were really looking forward to having a second dish for dinner, but you forgot to take out the frozen chicken or you forgot to soak the beans because you can cook frozen meat and um, unsoaked beans in the Instant Pot without sacrificing texture. So you just have to adjust the times. Um, you know, like I said earlier for chicken, um, you, for frozen chicken thighs, it's gonna be 11 minutes as opposed to nine minutes if they have been thawed. And then for chicken breasts, it's um, eight minutes when they are thawed and 10 minutes when they are frozen. So, and um, for like lentils, if you didn't soak them, it will probably take you maybe about 35 minutes to cook your, your dish. And if you soak them, the time greatly decreases to like, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And I think converting recipes is um, a question that people have a lot. And you know, we already talked about the three quart Instant Pot. Uh, it's in, so it's similar if you have an eight quart Instant Pot because a lot of recipes are written for the six quart. So you often find yourself trying to double up recipes <clears throat> and cooking more. So for the eight quart, you can double your ingredients and um, leave the cook time the same. So for the eight quart, oh, look, there it goes. So it's, it's just started cooking. It's gone up to pressure. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, eight quart. <laughs> eight quart, you double the ingredients and it will take a little bit longer to come to, uh, to, come to pressure. And what, on the Instant Pot website, they say that, you know, you should keep the cook time the same, but I would think maybe you might have to decrease the time a little bit because it's taken a longer time to come up to pressure. So the total time, if you were to leave the time the same, would be more. So, but you know, if you're cooking a stew or um, 
uh, a dish that requires a long cooking time, like um, you know congee or something, it doesn't really matter. But if you are cooking like a, a you know chicken thighs and things like that, it, it it will matter. So I would always err on the side of cooking less rather than cooking more time. So if you you know, if you cook for a shorter amount of time and you find that your dish is not cooked to your liking, you can always, you know, turn it back on and start it up again. But if your dish is overcooked, you can't do anything about it, right? <clears throat> okay, so some shortcuts. Um, if you are short in time, you can skip the browning process for the meat. So the main reason, well, I think there are two reasons why you would brown your meat. One is to, um, to create a, a Maillard reaction, which is when uh, it's a chemical reaction where um, the acids and the, the meat juices react to form a brown, flavorful um, coating on your meat. Now, if you were the, the instant pot, uh, because of the high pressure and the high temperatures, already extract a lot of flavor from your meat when you're cooking. So, the browning process is not 100% you know, necessary. But another reason why I like to brown my meat, especially um, you know, if I'm using chicken with the skin on, is to keep the meat intact so it doesn't fall apart. So that's one good reason to brown as well, but you know, if you're short in time, don't worry about it. Um, so use a hybrid pressure release. So what that means is, some recipes will ask you to do like a, um, a natural pressure release. So a natural pressure release is when you just let your instant pot sit there and let the let the pressure release naturally. Uh -huh. <laughs> so as opposed, it's as opposed to a manual release where you just you have to like press the button and actually turn it back on. Uh, you <laughs> press the button and actually. Um, let the pressure out and then you open your lid. So, <clears throat> so when you do a hybrid pressure release, let's say, you know, um, a sun dish calls for uh, <clears throat> a natural pressure release, but you, you're really hungry and you want to get eating. So what you can do is wait for 10 minutes, let it release naturally, and then do a manual pressure release. Um, there are some instances where you do not want to do this, and those are the times when you are cooking congee, rice porridge, um, you know, um, stews, and even soups. Because if you have not waited long enough for the pressure to release, um, the contents of the Instant Pot have not settled yet, and if you do a manual pressure release, you will get all kinds of stuff spouting out of your instant pot. <laughs> you do not want that. All right, so, oh, be judicious with your use of cornstarch. Um, when I was looking through recipes online, I noticed that people were using up to like, I don't know, a quarter to a half cup of cornstarch at times to thicken their sauces. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of cornstarch. So what I've tried to do with my recipes in my book is to use, you know, the optimum amount of liquid necessary to cook pr properly in the Instant Pot without you getting a burn notice. And what that does is, is that, you know, at the end of the cooking time, you will have just the right amount of sauce. Um, so I would say for the six quart, I would not put any less than I know, about half cup of liquids in there when you're cooking meats and vegetables because meats and vegetables have liquid in them too. So they will release all these liquids when you're cooking in the Instant Pot. But when you're cooking, um, you know, things like rice or pasta, those grains will absorb water. So you should definitely follow um, the recipes um, that, uh, that you find that have been tested. <clears throat> So, um, let's see, okay, all right. So, and when you're putting in the cornstarch at the end, um, I would just put a little at a time and just to see, just until the sauce 
thickens to your liking because if it's still not thick enough for your liking you can always add more cornstarch slurry and but if you um, but if you were to put too much then you this you've just got like one big lumpy mess so you do not want that <laughs> Um, another way to is to reduce your sauce. So take out your meat that's that's in the, the instant pot, and then um, just turn it to saute function, and then just reduce the sauce. So now zero minutes. <clears throat> I I actually got a lot of people emailing me and telling me that my recipe was wrong because I put down zero minutes <laughs> well and it's not wrong it's actually yes the time is zero minutes so as i mentioned um, earlier when your instant pot is coming up to pressure your um, your dish is already cooking so even though it's pressurizing and the start time has not started yet the cook time has not started yet your food is already cooking same thing when it's depressurizing your food is still cooking. So when I say zero minutes, it just means, you know, once it gets to the optimum pressure, it will start depressuring. So yeah, it, there's no cook time at all. And this is great for um, poaching chicken. So I have a Hainanese chicken recipe inside my um, cookbook that cooks a whole chicken for zero minutes. It takes, I think about, I don't know, 30 to 40 minutes for the instant pot to come to pressure and then it will start depressurizing but it yields chicken that is so velvety soft and tender um so zero minutes is also great for um, steaming fish or making um, egg custards like you know chawanmushi so yeah and then um i want to talk about a drop lid so or what is an otoshibuta in japanese so this is a great device. Um, <laughs> I, I actually got this um, online and I, I love this thing. But you can use a, a silicon lid as, as well, or you can make your own drop lid using parchment paper or aluminum foil. Um, you know, I, I have instructions in my cookbook and you can also Google it on, and you'll find it online. If all you need is just, you know, a circle and then you cut a hole out of the middle and using a drop lid in the instant pot is great. I use it for my um, pad thai recipe and um, so what a drop lid does is that it allows you to cook with a limited amount of liquid but because um, the water just keeps circulating um, beneath the drop lid it will flavor um, all your ingredients, and it will make sure that your food also cooks evenly. So, and you know, all all the ingredients are held in place so that they don't like you know, juggle all over the place and break apart. So, oh, okay. So now uh, the instant pot has finished cooking, and we are going to wait. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna let the pressure release naturally for five minutes before we do a manual release. Does anybody have any questions? Oh my gosh, I've been talking nonstop. And I see, I see there has been a lot in the chat box, but I don't know if there are any questions. Hmm. Anybody? We have yes, a question so from Jonathan. Oh, go ahead, Pat. Oh, no, no, I, I just saw his question, but yeah, why don't you read it out for everybody? Okay. So from Jonathan, uh, the drop lid goes between the instant pot lid and the pot with food in it. Yes, so you just put the drop lid right on the food, right on top of the food, so it touches. Uh, from Ella, ceramic versus stainless cooking insert. So, I use both and with the ceramic instant, it, it just takes a longer time to, for your food to get cooked, but you can use either one. Um, just make sure that it's heat proof. So that's, that's the only thing.
Anything else? No? Oh, and I forgot to show you all um, these nifty magnets, refrigerator magnets. So, oh, I don't know if you can see them, but these are great because um, it's like, you can see all the cook times on there. And so it's like a, a, a quick reference chart, if, depending on what you're cooking. You don't have to like dig through all your cookbooks to figure out what, what timing you need. So I think- A question um, from Carrie, uh, do you use uh, the droplet instead of aluminum foil? Um, what, what do you mean by instead of aluminum foil? You can make a droplet out of aluminum foil. So if you don't have one of these, you can make one out of aluminum foil or parchment. Either one will work. Uh, is that, was that the question? Yes, okay, all right. Anyway, so we've got another two minutes before we're gonna open up the lid and I have this nifty funnel, tunnel thing. I don't know what you would call this, but this is great if you're really scared of the steam that comes out of your instant pot. So put it over. Yeah, you, you put this thing on the, on your valve and I, I won't do it right now. Like, starting to release steam, but this is great when, um, you know, you want to direct the steam away from yourself or your cupboards. So, and so I usually put my Instant Pot underneath my, um, my cooker hood and I will turn on the hood when I release the steam so that all the steam just automatically gets sucked up. And um, so, yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you, you definitely do not want to ruin your cabinets. <laughs> and so, so what are um, some of the recipes that everybody likes to make in their instant pot? What are some favorites that people have? Anybody want to share some of their favorite recipes? Carnitas, yes, I love carnitas. Pho, jambalaya. Anji, oh my gosh, yes. You know, making kanji in the Instant Pot is such a game changer because I love not having to like stir. I, I don't, I, I've gotten really lazy over the years when I make kanji, I, I don't stir. So it never turns out as smooth as my mom's does. <laughs> But with, with the Instant Pot, you know, I'll, I'll put a whole carcass of chicken in there with my rice and some aromatics and I'll just turn it on and leave it. And it's, it's definitely a game changer, so. Lamb I've had a question, a question from Denise. How do you do eggs uh, hard boiled? How do I do them hard boiled? I, I would stick them in my... So you can stand them up on these, or you can just lay them down. You can just lay them on this trivet here and then steam it in the Instant Pot for, um, I can't remember the exact times right now, but uh, it's, in my, it's in my book, depending on you know, whether you want your soft boiled, half boiled, or hard boiled. So yeah. Uh, I, I can't remember right now, but you can easily find that information out um, online and I and I can also look that up for you if you'd like, so. Definitely easier and it the eggs peel so much easier. And I know people who like mass boil their eggs. So they're like boil a dozen at a time and then stick, stick them in the refrigerator. So no, there isn't a kanji recipe in my cookbook, um, but uh, there is one on my blog. So if you go to smithsonianapa.org slash pickles and tea, I have a, a kanji 
recipe in, on there for you. Mm. All right, I think we can open this guy up. So I am going to put on. Oh, no. I don't know if you can see it. Be released. I have a friend who was really afraid of the steam coming out. So what she would do, she would tell me, was like, you know, she would either she'd like take a wooden spoon and she'd be like, touch, she'll like press the button and then she'd be like pushing all the steam away from from her. So <laughs> that's exactly what I do Pat like that's exactly what I do the wooden spoon and everything I have to get one of one of those tunnel things oh so another trick for um getting your instant pot to go down in pressure quickly is to grab a damp cloth and then just drape it over your instant pot so um I mean, it, it might shave you off like, I don't know, five minutes <laughs> or so, I, you know, if you had a really long natural pressure release, but uh, yeah, you can definitely try that method too. So let's yeah, so pull this off. <clears throat> okay. Nicely browned. I am going to pull the meat out. Put it in my dish here. Mm. And I w when I first realized how easy teriyaki chicken was to make at home, I, I made it all the time. Like one of my favorite dishes in college, teriyaki chicken, and it's so easy. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna turn it off, and I'm gonna turn it to saute. And saute high and I'm going to turn it on yes yes what is going on Okay, now we're gonna saute the carrots. So I have carrots sliced very thinly. You can use any vegetable you like. And, um, and I mean, if you don't wanna use vegetables, you don't have to, but I like to cook vegetables with my meat just because um, vegetables are good for you. <laughs> And if you don't mind mushy vegetables, you can always put like um, thick cut carrots or potatoes in with the chicken. So that's the only thing about the instant pot though. Your vegetables get mushy really quickly if you don't pay attention to the time. That's why I always prefer to add my vegetables at the end so um, that I can control how much time it takes. To, to cook them. Or another option is to just microwave your vegetables and then add them to the meat at the end. That will save you time as well. So yeah, you wanna 
cook the veggies for about I don't know, three or four minutes, just depending on how you like your carrots. I like them crisp tender, so let's see how long it takes. Probably about three or four minutes. Um, other quick cooking vegetable options are like green peas. They take like no time at all to cook. So corn, I would even add some you know, cherry tomatoes in there if I had some. Green beans, asparagus. Mm. Yeah. So, um, anybody have any questions? No. I have one. Um, what have you ever? made a mistake cooking in your Instant Pot or have a recipe gone bad? Oh my gosh, yes, of course. <laughs> Whenever you know, I recipe test, there have always been recipes that have gone bad. So you know, sometimes I will like mistake the sugar for the salt or I overcook a dish or, you know, the, the good thing about cooking on the stove top is like you can taste as you go, but with the Instant Pot, you know, you have to put all the different seasonings in, ingredients in at the beginning. So um, you can't really taste as you go. I mean, you can always adjust the flavors at the end as well, but by that time you probably just want to like sit down and eat, right? So, <laughs> so yeah. Oh yeah, the, they have like the, the chashu recipe in my cookbook, that we, I went through quite a few rounds. <laughs> um testing for that recipe because yeah <laughs> that that was not an easy one to put together but i'm very happy with the way that it turned out so but that being said you know like i see recipes as a guide for you in the kitchen it's not the end all and be all so if there's something that you don't like about a certain recipe feel free to change it that's the beauty about home cooking too it's all about your taste and your palate and and you know what your families or your your family or your roommates like so feel free to go ahead and change things up there's nothing wrong with that i do that all the time I, even though they say that you should always try a recipe as written for the very first time and then after you've done that you can change it up as and how you like it but yeah i, I don't always follow that <laughs> that rule so i don't expect all of you to follow that rule either <laughs> A question from Denise, if a beef roast is too chewy, has it been cooked too long or too short? Um, it depends on the cut of meat, I suppose, I, I think. So um, I think if you haven't cooked it long enough, um, it can be chewy too. But and, and if you have cooked it way too long, it would have dried out and can be chewy. So um, I have to be, yeah, I, I can't, I have to be honest and I really wouldn't know how to save an overdone piece of beef roast. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we don't tend to cook beef roasts um, in Asian cooking. So uh, yeah, I, I don't cook that at home. I mean, does anybody have any suggestions? Yeah, cooking is, is more of a community of, um, effort. So I'm sure somebody out there might have some advice for Denise. Anyone? Happy with extra gravy. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that might. That, that might be a, a or or maybe you can like just cut it up into chunks and stew it and hope that you know it it tenderizes a little bit more as it stews in a liquid. So okay, I think I'm gonna turn this off right now. And I'm just gonna dump my snow peas in there. You don't even need to have them saute on 
for the snow peas because they cook really quickly. You leave them in there for about 30 seconds to a minute. All depends on how crunchy you like your vegetables. Oops. Getting in the way. All right, so the snow peas have turned bright green. in time. We have a comment from Linda. Your adaptation of Taiwanese beef noodle soup recipe in this cookbook is fantastic. And oh, you do a great so cooking much. demo. Mm, thank you so much. So that Taiwanese beef noodle recipe actually came from my friend Linda Xu. And uh, she actually just had um, released a, a cookbook as well called Spice Box Kitchen. So she's, her parents are from Taiwan and that was like one of her favorite recipes growing up. And so she adapted it a little bit, but it's been based on her mother's recipe. So I don't, I may be biased, but I think that mom's and grandma's recipes are, are always the best. <laughs> But I, you know, I will let her know that you enjoy her recipe. And that's a great dish to cook in the instant pot as well. Let's see. <laughs> I'm like, ta-da, okay, there we go. There it is, yay. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I think it's already seven o'clock, so um, that is the end of the cooking demo. Um, it, does anybody have any last minute questions? Oh, thank you, Eve. I hope you'll try it. It's so easy and it tastes so good. Thank you, Jean. Thank you all for coming. And I'm, I'm so happy that you could spend this hour with me. You know, everybody's time is precious, so. And you know, if you have any other questions, um, please feel free to contact me via social media. I'm uh, picklesmt on Twitter and pickles.and.t on Instagram. So feel free to, to send me a message on social media. I'll be happy to, <clears throat> to answer any questions that you might have. And I have lots of recipes on my website. Um, they're not all Instant Pot recipes, but they're you know, a whole bunch of Asian and Pan-Asian recipes and some fusion recipes. So, and uh, yes, thank you. Thank you for supporting me and thank you for supporting East Wind Books. You know, we, we should definitely support all our independent bookstores. Hmm. Um, before we end our program, can we take a group photo? Uh, if, if you all uh, wanna, um, get your instant pots ready or your culinary <laughs> creations. I'll give you all a second to do that. <laughs> that would be great. And yeah, and also in, in the meantime, yeah, if, so if you haven't already, um, I highly encourage you to get a copy of um, Pat's book. I, I actually, before we, before we um, coordinated this event with Pat, I um, started cooking from her cookbook. So I was super excited um, when, when Eastwind was like, yeah, we're going to do an event with her. And I had all sorts of questions, but I've figured it out now with all the practice. So thank you so much, Pat. It's really exciting to, to watch you cook live um, and, and to read all of these comments and know um, that other people also have like questions because 
I it, it's it is very intimidating to have this this machine and <laughs> it's, it's like how does this work with the buttons and everything and now it's what is it like bluetooth capable or wi-fi yes, I know. Yeah. There, there is some bluetooth capable in some parts out there I'm like oh. Hey, too much wow. technology for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I really hope that the 40% of you who have not taken your instant pot out of the box yet will actually break it out sometime. This yeah. not this weekend, sometime soon. Yeah, and send us your photos. Um, you know, tag us, tag us on Instagram or Facebook. We'd love to see what you all have come up with. Um, but it looks like we're all ready for this picture. So let's see, get this ready. Wow, Jonathan, wow. <laughs> Y'all make me hungry. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, hi, Tina and Sunny, look at that. Oh, cool, great. Christy, all right, okay, ready? One, two, three. And another one, we have a couple, okay. And two, three. And one more, one more. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Um, yeah, and if you all, if you all um don't want to be in the photo, just email us and we can crop you out. Um yeah, thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, this was this was a lot of fun. Um, we uh will share the recording if you all um came in late um or just want to rewatch the program and 